I'm going to try a 1940s meal plan, and I'm going to try to do it without modern appliances. Let's back up a bit. I was shopping at a local antique store, and as I was browsing their sales section, I spotted this cookbook. When I saw it penciled in at the front, circa 1942 wartime, I knew I had to get it. And when I saw that there was a meal plan at the back of the book, I knew I needed to try it out. Now one thing that I love about this cookbook is that it contains color photographs. There's just something about color that brings the food to life and helps to humanize that time in history for me. There's a special section at the back of the book all about wartime cookery. Americans experienced food shortages during the war and the cookbook states that it was due to a lack of manpower for production, lack of transportation facilities for distribution, and reservation of shippable foods for the armed forces. They also have a section on how to feed a family of five on $15 a week. Adjusting for inflation, that's about $270 to $284. So it seems like people were spending a higher percentage of their income on food back then. New taxes and other expenses during wartime made a budget more needed. The menu that I'll be cooking from immediately follows this $15 a week advice, so I'm assuming this was considered an economical menu. On the menu for breakfast is prune juice with lemon, cooked wheat cereal, toast, jelly, milk, and coffee. Pretty simple, let's make it. Now I already made the prune juice last night because it takes 45 to 50 minutes to stew the prunes and then you're supposed to use the juice from that. The meal plan doesn't really say how you use the prune juice. I don't know if it's you're supposed to drink it, add it in with the cereal, so I guess I'm gonna try both and see what happens. wash the pot. I'm using this creamy wheat cereal. I think this is probably a little bit different than what they would have used because they're advising you to cook it a lot longer. Although they do mention like modern cereals that cook quicker, so maybe this was available back then. Interesting, the cookbook talks about different types of coffee. It says the standard kinds of coffee on the market today are Mocha, Java, Bogota, Rio, and Santos. Although only about 3% of the coffee used in the United States is actually from Mocha or Java, these names represent grades that are regularly for sale. Instant coffee was also available at the time, but in this cookbook they call it instantaneous coffees. And they say they're for campers or those that want a quick cup of coffee. That would be me. I have a ton of cooking today, so I'm going to go for the instant coffee. According to Toast.net, by 1920, the first pop-up toaster with a timer was introduced by a Minnesotan named Charles Streit, who had long been bemoaning the burnt toast in his company cafeteria and decided to do something about it. Sliced bread followed shortly after in 1928, and toaster sales boomed. And the cookbook mentions an electric toaster and automatic timing on page 156, so I'll be using my toaster to toast my bread. It doesn't say anything about serving the toast with butter, so I guess it's just jam. Probably because of wartime shortages, but I don't know. Maybe it was just to save money. And here was the completed breakfast. I added some milk to the coffee and wheat cereal and some of the prune juice to the wheat cereal. Okay, let's give all this food a try. The creamy wheat kind of brings me back to my childhood because that is something that I ate growing up. I'm glad I added the milk because otherwise it would be pretty bland. And I think that the prune juice does help to sweeten it up a bit, which is good. That's good bread. Oh, bread. I definitely prefer my toast with butter. This is still okay because this is my homemade sourdough bread, but I would prefer it with butter. <laughs> when I smelled this coffee, it brought me back to my childhood too because it smelled like the coffee that my grandma would make. I didn't drink coffee back then, but just the smell brought me back. Okay, so now I'm going to try the prune juice just plain. It 
It's not bad. I don't know that I really would want to drink a bunch of it though. Mm. I think I prefer it in the cereal. Okay, I actually had kind of a hard time finishing all that. That was quite a bit of food. All right, I'll finish this prune juice. The lemon makes it kind of tart. Overall, that was um, quite the filling breakfast. It was lacking in protein for me, for sure. It was a little bit sweet. I feel a little bit jittery, but let's hope that lunch is a little higher in protein and lower in sugar. Now, some form of dishwasher had been invented by the 1940s, but it didn't really catch on until after the war, and it wasn't super common in American households until like the 60s or the 70s, so I'll be washing all of these dishes by hand. I decided to try to be somewhat historically accurate with my outfit, hair, and makeup for the day. So the night before, I put my hair in pin curls, wrapped my head in a scarf, and slept on that overnight. Then I brushed out my curls and rolled them into victory rolls. This was a popular hairstyle in the early to mid 40s, and I tried to recreate it in a way that would have been practical for work. Historians don't come for me. One of the most iconic makeup trends of the 40s was the red lip. I don't own a super vibrant red lip color, but I may do with a tinted lip balm. Lunch is pretty complicated, so I'm gonna get started on that right away. But first of all, I have to work on the tomato jelly salad for supper because that has to set in the fridge for a while. The ingredients honestly looked like a weird combo to me. Celery, bay leaf, stewed tomatoes, salt, water, gelatin, sugar, onion, a clove, and green bell pepper, which they called a green pepper pod. First, it says to cook the tomatoes with the seasonings, and apparently the onion, celery, and green pepper count as seasonings. Then you're supposed to soak the gelatin in the cold water and add that to the boiling tomatoes and strain it all. and pour it into cups about the size of a tomato. I used ramkins, which worked pretty well. So the menu for lunch is baked noodles with mushroom sauce, buttered peas, carrot sticks, whole wheat muffins, fresh or canned berries with molasses cookies, and milk. And they say that you can substitute pears or applesauce when in season, so that's what I'll be doing. So the first thing that I think I need to get going for lunch is the molasses cookies. The ingredients for the molasses cookies were flour, baking powder, salt, baking soda, ginger, cinnamon, melted shortening, molasses, water, which was interesting. You don't often see water in a cookie recipe, and an egg. You basically sift together the dry ingredients, whisk together the wet ingredients, and then combine the two and let that sit for 10 minutes. Then you're supposed to roll the cookies out on a floured board, and let me tell you, you need to generously flour your board. The dough is quite sticky. I wish I would have used more flour on the board because the dough tended to stick to it. As you can see, I basically had to scrap some of the first ones I rolled because they stuck so badly. I learned my lesson on the second time around. The instructions said to bake them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. They didn't give any visual cues as to when the cookies were done, so I did end up over baking them a bit. Okay, now for the whole wheat muffins, because two carbs are definitely not enough. Now, I forgot to buy whole wheat flour because I usually just grind my own flour, so this was kind of a cheat. However, I did some research and apparently the first electric household grain mill was developed in the 1930s, but I kind of doubt that it was super common in 1940s households. Honestly, making these muffins was pretty nostalgic. Muffins were something I made fairly often as a teenager, so this process brought me right back. Now, 
Now I can finally start working on the main dish of lunch, which is the baked noodles with mushroom sauce. Now the book didn't have a specific recipe for baked noodles with mushroom sauce. It just had the recipe for the mushroom sauce. So what I'm gonna do is I'll boil up some noodles and I'll mix them with the mushroom sauce and bake that for a bit. And I think that's gonna be delicious. The mushroom sauce was pretty simple, almost like a mushroom gravy. I also boiled up some frozen peas and added some butter. And this was the completed lunch menu. And here's the plate I dished up for myself. Okay, let's give this a taste. I'm actually pretty hungry after all that cooking, so I'm gonna appreciate this. Mmm, that's surprisingly tasty. Mm. I am getting a good mushroom flavor in there. Mmm. And I like the combination with the buttered peas. Again, it just brings me back to my childhood because this flavor combination just reminds me of stuff that I ate, stuff that my grandma would cook. Hmm. Now let's see how this muffin turned out. I would much prefer to have it with butter, but they didn't offer it on the menu plan, so. Hmm, that's decent. It's less sweet than a lot of muffins that I've had before. There's only two tablespoons of sugar for 12 muffins, and I actually like that. I think that's a nice accompaniment to a meal. It's almost more like an actual quick bread instead of a cupcake in muffin form. Mm. Very good, all very good. Mm. All right, now it's time for dessert, which is the soft molasses cookies milk and applesauce. They smell good. Mm. Very strong molasses flavor. I think I probably overbaked them a bit because they probably are supposed to be a bit softer, but they are still decently soft. Mm. Not bad. I would prefer a cookie with less molasses, but I'm assuming they recommended these cookies because in the wartime, molasses was easier to get than white sugar. Good, but that's a bit sweet for me. I'm not a huge fan of applesauce. It's pretty good though, not bad. Overall, this lunch was quite good. It had a lot of like comfort foods and it was pretty filling, but again, it kind of lacked on protein in my opinion. Tasted good though. Now it's time to tackle this mountain of dishes. Okay, so I got most of the dishes done, so now I can finally take a break before I cook supper. So I realized that I actually own a book that was on the New York Times bestseller list in 1942, which was the year that the cookbook was published. So I thought it'd be fun to read a bit of it while I'm relaxing. Okay, so it's a few hours later and it's time to get started on supper. So the supper menu is, or they call it dinner actually, is liver loaf, boiled cabbage, tomato jelly salad, enriched bread, mocha refrigerator cake, milk, tea, and coffee. Now, I already made the mocha refrigerator cake last night because it was supposed to sit in the fridge for 20 to 24 hours.
And of course I already got the tomato jelly salad going earlier, so I just have to put the finishing touches on that. So I'm gonna get started on the liver loaf. Now I'm gonna be totally honest, liver is not really my favorite thing. In fact, I would say it's probably one of my least favorite things to eat on the planet. But I'm going to withhold judgment until I taste this liver loaf. Okay, so you're supposed to pour boiling water over the liver and let it sit for 10 minutes, so that's what I'm gonna do. Let's stand 10 minutes and then drain. I'm not sure what that's supposed to accomplish. Now I don't have salt pork, so I'm just gonna use bacon instead. Okay, so now the fun part. Part where I regret it all. Uh, gross. Uh, why did I do this? Oh. Uh, it's so gross. <gasps> uh, uh, it's gross. Oh, I hate touching it. Uh, it, it makes a bad noise when you chop it. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, it's so slippery. Gross. One problem is my knives are not very sharp. Oh, it's so gross. I don't know if I can get it fine enough to make it edible. I might have to put it in the blender. My poor blender. Oh, it's so tough to cut. Uh -oh. Okay, I gave up. I don't think that I can make that edible with just chopping with a knife. So I'm going to cheat and put it in the food processor and I will not be washing this food processor by hand. So I needed to put the finishing touches on the tomato jelly salad before serving. I turned it out onto a lettuce leaf. And then topped it off with a spoonful of mayonnaise. Isn't it lovely? So here was the completed supper. I'm gonna be honest, I am dreading this meal. The other meals um, I thought were fine. They were great. This one, I don't even want to taste it. I'm gonna start with the salad, actually. This is quite strange. I don't think that we really have stuff like this anymore. Jellied salads, quite strange. But maybe it will taste amazing. I have to admit, the texture, I do not care for. Well, I'm just kind of strange to be eating a tomato-y thing that's gelatinous like that. Oh, okay, I'll try another bite. Mm-mm. Ugh, no thanks. Not really my favorite. Ugh, gives me the shivers. Oh, I just, even the smell of the liver is just, oh, why did I do this? Oh, it's this weird kind of like grayish color. Okay, I'm not gonna hold my nose. Okay, I'm going to take the bite and then I'm gonna wash it down with the bread if it's terrible. Oh, I don't even wanna put it, I don't wanna eat it. Okay, here we go. Oh, I really hate liver. Okay, I can do this, I can do this. I can do this. I don't need, ah! Oh, it smells so bad. Okay, here we go, oh no, oh! Okay, here we go. I've tasted worse liver. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has that liver flavor, but it's not 
horribly strong. <laughs> Not my favorite. I'll wash it down with some cabbage. Cabbage is not great either. I mean, honestly, I probably overcooked it. It's not that overcooked though. I just don't like boiled cabbage that much. Ugh, this is the worst meal yet for sure. Hopefully the dessert is good. Oh, my bread is good. Mm. Not great. Why did people eat this? It's disgusting. And this was supposed to be dinner, the fancy meal of the day. So as I said, I started the dessert the night before since it needed to sit in the fridge for quite a while. But I needed to put a few finishing touches on it. I whipped up some cream with a rotary beater and spread that on top of the mocha icebox cake. Then I chopped some pistachios and sprinkled those on top and the cake was done. The recipe suggested that you could also decorate the cake with candied cherries or fresh strawberries, but I skipped those. Okay, so here I have my mocha icebox cake, and the interesting thing is they call it mocha. Uh, these days, mocha means it's coffee plus chocolate, but back then, I think it just meant coffee, because it was coffee from a certain region of the world, supposedly. And then I made myself some tea and added some cream. All right, let's give it a taste. Mmm. That's not bad. It's a lot better than the liver loaf, I'll tell you that. Mmm. I like that. I think I could do with a little more bitterness. Yeah, maybe from chocolate or if the coffee flavor wasn't quite so sweet. The ladyfingers themselves are fairly sweet, so I could do with the filling being less sweet. Hmm, the flavor is nice. Hmm, let's try it with the tea. Hmm, this is a good little dessert. It wasn't too difficult to make either. Hmm, very good. I think I would prefer more whipped cream. Mm. Overall, quite nice. So in conclusion, this was very interesting. Breakfast and lunch were just fine. I felt like they were a little bit lacking in protein, but the overall flavors of the foods were pretty familiar to me. I would say that my favorite thing that I made was actually the baked noodles with mushroom sauce. It was really simple, but really flavorful. Now the supper, on the other hand, the only thing that I liked was the bread. Everything else I pretty much actively disliked. I mean, the cabbage was okay. It's just not my favorite. Also, this was a lot of work. I felt like I was just cooking all day. Now, granted, when you're filming, everything does take longer and is more work. But even so, I felt like there was just a lot of cooking going on. And when you're having to wash all the dishes by hand, there's just mountains of dishes. Normally, if you can just load it into the dishwasher really quick, it really helps to give you back your counter space. But when you're hand washing the dishes, you kind of have to wash them regularly. Otherwise, of course, you'll run out of dishes, but also you'll run out of counter space. So in conclusion, they needed to pay 1940s housewives more. Now to go finish the dishes. 